This is the x-ray of a patient affected by Itai Itai disease, a terrible illness that caused the bones of Japanese farmers to break. But what caused it and who was responsible for this horror? Welcome back to this new episode of Crazy But True. I'm Stefano and today I want to tell you about one of the darkest pages in Japanese history. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers. We are Italians. It was manually translated into English but dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. Now, in your opinion, who solved the case? The Japanese police? Absolutely not. The Japanese Medical Association? No, it wasn't them either. It was this man, a doctor who, after a lengthy and troubled investigation, finally managed to work out what caused this peculiar disease and who the guilty parties were. So he also managed to save hundreds of people, you might be thinking. In reality, the situation was a bit more complex than that. What undoubtedly happened is that he was defamed and became depressed and an alcoholic in just a short time. I'd like to introduce you to our hero, Noboru Hagino. The story of our journey begins in 1946 in Japan in what is currently the town of Fushu. Noboru Hagina was a doctor in his 30s who had just returned from a Second World War front line and had started working in the family clinic located in the area. Something though was amiss in that clinic, something was going wrong. In fact, there was an escalating influx of patients with a peculiar ailment that caused their bones to break. Quite literally. But what were the exact symptoms of this disease? Itai itai literally means ouch ouch. I mean, just think about it. They actually felt compelled to give this disease the name ouch ouch when there are so many painful diseases out there. You can only imagine how much these poor victims must have suffered. In the beginning, actually, the symptoms weren't so terrible. There was joint and back pain. And in fact, the symptoms were thought to be related to the hard work the patients carried out in the rice fields. But in reality, the illness developed rapidly and the bones became as delicate as crystal and the mere act of coughing or a physician applying excessive pressure on the patient's arm were enough to cause bones to break. In addition to the enormous bone problems, there were usually issues with the liver and kidneys, making for an extremely complex clinical picture. But who were these patients? They were actually primarily farmers. Why, you may ask, was this particular group affected? We'll come back to that in a little while. A big problem, in addition to the illness, was that families considered the affliction to be a sort of curse. These poor people were not immediately taken to hospital, but were kept at home without any kind of care, anesthesia, or anything. Those who were a little less superstitious, such as doctors, believed that this disease was linked to a mix of fatigue from life in the fields and malnutrition because, after all, the peasants' diet consisted almost exclusively of rice alone. By the way, make sure you remember this information, as it will be highly useful to us in the future. However, Hagino had realized that the cause couldn't be that simple, that there must be something else underlying it, and he was determined to understand what it was. The doctor subsequently began working at night, referring to all the manuals he was familiar with, but unfortunately this illness was nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, however, the news had reached some local newspapers. To avoid looking like they were caught off guard on August 12, 1955, they gathered together 200 people affected by Itai Itai. Their idea was to understand the causes of the disease, so once the people were found and brought together, exams and tests were done and they published the results. They had finally worked out what it was all about. I'll read you the causes listed in the official report. So, the reported causes were malnutrition, excessive work, a vitamin D deficiency, and an insufficient exposure to sunlight. An insufficient exposure to sunlight? You can't say that a farmer doesn't spend enough time in the sun. They're under the sun all day long. This makes you see that even the doctors didn't know which way to turn and had no idea what the real underlying problem causing Itayatai was. What geniuses, what scientific and medical luminaries, the locals didn't take all of this it in a very positive way. As I said before, they believed it was some kind of a curse, and now the news had spread to all the local newspapers, so they were a little disgruntled. And who did they take it out on? With Dr. Hagino, since he had been one of the main promoters of the tests. Do you think Hagino agreed with the test results? He obviously did not. Could he do anything about it? He obviously could not. However, he didn't give up and decided to continue his investigations. In fact, he quickly noticed something that had never crossed his mind before. Nearly all the patients came from the same region. Excellent! At long last, he had a new lead. All the patients, in fact, lived along the course of the Jinsu River and no one lived upstream from the city of Fushu. 
Upstream from Fushu was the Kamioka Mine, an ancient mine which is believed to have operated since 720 AD. At the time of our story, it was used for zinc mining. The point is that waste from the mining process was not managed in the best possible way. It was more a case of a pipe just discharging it all into the river. The problem is that people lived along the river, the same people that used the river for fishing and above all for cultivating rice fields. So Hagino began testing the waters and discovered mercury, arsenic and lead, which are all extremely harmful substances, but not ones which could potentially cause the symptoms like those presented by Itai Itai patients. He knew the mine was involved, but lacked concrete evidence. Despite this, he started spreading the word that the mining company was responsible. But in your view, if he lacked evidence, did anyone believe him? They obviously did not. On the contrary, people, and other physicians in particular, started obstructing his progress. In 1959, though, four years after the doctor's studies began, an experienced agronomist knocked on his door. His name was, I'll read it to you, Kanaichi Yoshioka, and he had read a study by another Japanese doctor about cadmium soil contamination. What if cadmium was the metal they were looking for? Cadmium, we might say, is a somewhat infamous element because there is so little of it. It is only present in traces, and if you don't look carefully enough, you might not even find it. And this is especially true if we consider what the equipment must have been like back in those days. However, now that they had a new lead, Hagino and his new friends started going to the area to do new tests, and they created two maps. Here they are. In the first map, we can see the areas most contaminated by cadmium, those colored black, so to speak. In the other map instead, we have the areas most affected by the Itai Itai. When we compare them, we can see that the two maps can be superimposed, and for the most part they match up, so the doctors realized that cadmium was almost certainly to blame. Then I don't know if you remember, but earlier I instructed you take note of some particular information, that is that rice was the farmer's main source of food. In fact, rice was the real acid test. Agino and his colleague conducted tests on these plants and realized that they contained levels of cadmium that were far higher than those of any other plant in the area. They had finally understood what the cause of the illness was, but why does cadmium cause so much damage? If certain elements such as iron and zinc are missing our diet, our body has the ability to absorb cadmium in their absence. In the farmer's case, they had an extremely poor diet because it consisted almost entirely of rice, rice that was extremely rich in cadmium. They absorbed a lot of cadmium. To give you an idea, we're talking about approximately one milligram a day. Is that a lot? Is that a little? Consider that this quantity is about 20 times the maximum acceptable dosage, and it is 200 times higher than what other Japanese farmers living in other parts of the country were consuming. The issue with cadmium is that it reduces our calcium absorption, causing conditions like osteoporosis and osteomalacia. I'm not a doctor, so I won't comment on things that I don't know enough about, but what does it add up to? To bones breaking and splintering, as they are as fragile as crystal. Listening to Hagino meant destroying rice sales completely because who would purchase rice that is contaminated with cadmium? In fact, although Hagino discovered the causes of the disease, everyone called him a charlatan. So, as if by textbook, Hagino felt a little down to say the least and slid into alcoholism, which in turn led to a range of liver diseases. In 1963, the American National Institutes of Health, NIH, recognized Hagino's work and allocated funds to support his research efforts. As soon as the United States paid Hagino, the other doctors started to say, well, you know, maybe Hagino was right. Okay, you sheep, before you ignored him completely, he fell into depression. You should feel guilty if you're still alive. So, 11 years after Hagino's first studies, the Japanese government finally recognized the role of cadmium in the Itai Itai syndrome. And for the first time in history, pollution was considered the direct cause of a disease. On June 30th, 1971, about 500 families gathered in court and finally managed to win their legal battle against the mining company, which was forced to pay 1.4 billion yen in compensation, just under 10 million euros. Hagino died on June 26th, 1990 at the age of 74. I'll leave you with a bitter little pill to swallow. The doctor never witnessed the closure of the mining company because it closed three days after his death, putting an end once and for all to this long and tragic story. Well guys, thank you for watching me this far. As I said before, if you know any other crazy stories, recommend them to me below in comments. See you again for our next video, right here on Geopop, Everyday Science. Ciao!